Lulu Garcia Navarro is the host of the New York Times podcast, First Person and a member of the Inter-American Dialogue. Damas y caballeros, nos complace presentar a nuestra maestra de ceremonias, Lulu Garcia Navarro. Es miembro del Diálogo Interamericano y la presentadora del podcast First Person del New York Times. She previously worked for 17 years as a foreign correspondent at NPR and as host of Weekend Edition Sunday. Her insightful reporting has led to numerous awards, including the Edward R. Murrow and Peabody Awards for her coverage of the Arab Spring and the Amazon Rainforest. Please welcome your host for the evening, Lulu Garcia Navarro. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Bonsoir. I think those are the three main languages, at least, uh, from the hemisphere that I know. Um, I am so delighted to be here this evening with you all. Um, and I can tell that you are all delighted to be with each other because it took you a while to take your seats, <laughs> uh, which is always a sign of a good event. Uh, I am a member of the Dialogue, and it is indeed a privilege to welcome you all to the Leadership for the Americas Gala. The annual gala is the premier fundraiser for the Inter-American Dialogue, and it has over 100 distinguished members from 21 countries promoting democratic governance, prosperity, and social equity across the hemisphere for 40 years. This year alone, the Dialogue published 26 expert reports, hosted 40 events, with public and private sectors and civil society leaders from 20 countries. Wide-ranging topics have connected leaders working on education, migration, relations between Latin America and Asia, the energy transition, women's reproductive rights, the rule of law, and freedom of the press. And as we know, these are all incredibly important topics. I am now incredibly pleased to introduce Dr. Rebecca Bill Chavez, the president and CEO of the Inter-American Dialogue. Dr. Chavez assumed leadership of the Dialogue in April 2022, so this is her first event of this stature. She previously served as Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for, West, for the Western Hemisphere under the Obama administration. Before that, she was a tenured political science professor at the US Naval Academy and a Fulbright scholar. She is also and I think more importantly, a die-hard soccer fan. <laughs> I mean, if not, what is she doing here? Come on. Who lives in DC with her husband, Pablo, and two children, Penelope and Oscar, who is a proud member of the local Special Olympics traveling team. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to the president and CEO of the Inter-American Dialogue, Dr. Rebecca Bill Chavez. Thank you so much, Lulu, and thank you to all of you for being here. Bienvenidos a todos y todas. Good evening, everyone. I am really full of gratitude this evening. First of all, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to lead the Inter-American Dialogue, which is so deeply meaningful to me. For over 30 years, first as a student, then as a professor, then as a US government official, and virtually all of my career, the dialogue has been part of my life. And I'm grateful that in my current role, I can carry forward the legacy and help guide the dialogue through its next chapter, making it as essential to the next generation of the hemisphere's leaders as it has been to so many of us for four decades. Tonight, we're celebrating 40 years since the first meeting of the dialogue. Since that gathering in 1982, the dialogue has become a home to thought leadership in the Americas. It has been an agenda setter with convening power and credibility, an essential partner to governments and to civil society throughout the region. And as Lulu mentioned, it's a truly hemispheric organization with members from across the Americas. Much of this happened under, under the leadership of former dialogue presidents, Michael Shifter and Peter Hakem, who are here with, it, with us this evening. Thank you so much, Michael and Peter. We're also here together to recommit to our mission and to carry forward the dialogue's deep legacy of impactful 
hemispheric work. This is so important because the dialogue's mission of fostering democratic governments, governance, prosperity, and social equity remains deeply relevant and necessary. In today's reality of democratic backsliding, economic contraction, inequality and poverty, and region-wide challenges like climate change, it's more important forever also that we join together. These challenges do not respect borders. They're transnational in nature. And the only way to address them is if we do so together. We also need to meet the, fa the needs of this fast-changing hemisphere by focusing more of our efforts on inclusion. By supporting women in historically marginalized and underrepresented communities. And reaching and preparing the next generation of leaders and on meeting the challenges of climate change in the hemisphere. We will also continue to engage the region in new and creative ways, such as through our cities initiative, which promotes information sharing and best practices for policy challenges at the local level in areas like migrant inclusion and climate adaptation. We created this program in recognition that innovative solutions at the local level are especially critical given the gridlock, the polarization, the dysfunction that we're seeing at the national level across much of the hemisphere, including in the United States. We'll be relaunching our Peter D. Bell Democracy and Rule of Law program in early 2023. For 40 years, since, since its very beginning, democracy has been at the center of the dialogue's work and will continue to focus in the face of the trouble erosion of democratic institutions in much of the hemisphere. I'm also grateful that we can gather today in person after so much time meeting over via screens. For many of you, I've seen you, I've talked to you many times over Zoom and here, it's just so nice to see you in person, to see how tall you, you, might, you actually are or, or the reverse. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, that didn't sound right, did it? <laughs> um, anyway, it is wonderful to be with so many for old friends and to meet new ones. I'd like to thank our board chairs, President Laura Tinchia and Ambassador Tom Shannon, Shannon and our amazing board of directors who are with us tonight. I also want to thank the Gala Leadership Committee for their outstanding work to make this evening possible. Maria Alexandra Velez, Adrian Sheen, Landon Loomis, Arturo Sudukan and Jose Gonzalez, and to board member Maria Fernanda Teixeira, who literally, I think she moved mountains to make the gala a success this year. Thank you as well to tonight's truly remarkable honorees who are doing incredible work in the areas of financial and economic inclusion. Luisa, Luisa Trajano and Pier Paolo Barbieri. I'm grateful to the ambassadors and the dip diplomatic corps from across the region. Thank you for being here tonight. And much, much gratitude to our gener generous sponsors you see listed in the program and on the screen. Without you, the dialogue would not be able to operate. And with you, we have great ideas, great partnerships, and support. Thank you so much. Thank you to the many officials of the US government who are here, including the Dialogue alum who are now serving in the Biden administration. And as a special addition to the program this evening, we're gonna have a very short fireside chat with four senior administration officials from the Western Hemisphere team to give us an update on US engagement with the region. Finally, my deepest gratitude to the incredible dialogue team whose expertise and passion are what make the dialogue stand, stand out. To our program directors, Margaret Myers, who leads our Asia and Latin America work, Ariel Fiesbein, who leads our education program, Manuel Orozco, who is responsible for our migration work, and Daniela Stevens, who leads our climate and energy program. Their work inspires me every day. Thank you to our incredible dialogue staff, including our gala team, Courtney Guthro, Eric Brandt, Devin Severson, Gaston Ocampo, and Elizabeth Belair. And to the rest of the dialogue team, you're amazing. 
Finally, I just want to emphasize that we're here to partner with you to support dialogue and solutions, to work with the community of the Americas to foster democratic governments, inclusive economic recovery, and equity in Latin America and the Caribbean. All of us at the Dialogue are deeply grateful for your partnership and support, and we look forward to an amazing evening with all of you. I hope you're all enjoying the dinner. Our next speaker is a senior advisor at Arnold & Porter, one of our sponsors here this evening after a long, distinguished career at the State Department serving as Under Secretary of State for Political Affairs, Assistant Secretary for Western Hemisphere Affairs, and Special Advisor to the President. Prior, he served in the Foreign Service and embassies across the world, but when I knew him, when I was a foreign correspondent, he was the Ambassador to Brazil appointed by President Obama. And I'm sure he has plenty to say about the recent election results. Fun fact, he has such a large collection of awards that his wife has banished him, banished it, <laughs> banished them to his office at Arnold and Porter. He also wanted me to tell everyone here that he bears a striking resemblance to George Clooney. <laughs> I will let you judge for yourselves. Please join me in welcoming the co-chair of the Dialogue's Board of Directors, the Honorable Thomas A. Shannon. Well, good evening, and what a pleasure to be here with all of you. Whenever someone calls me the Honorable Tom Shannon, I'm reminded that it took an act of the President and a vote of the Congress to make me honorable. <laughs> but listen, welcome to the Inter-American Dialogues Gala. It's been so many years since we've been able to do something like this, and I want to extend my gratitude to Rebe Rebecca Bill Chavez, to her extraordinary staff, and to all of you who have made this possible tonight, coming together once again to celebrate our love and passion for the Americas and our belief in the importance of engagement, understanding, and dialogue. And as we continue in, in this beautiful venue, as we continue with this wonderful meal, as we acknowledge the extraordinary individuals who are promoting deep transformational change uh, in our hemisphere. It's important to remind ourselves that this is all about human agency. This is all about our ability to make decisions. It's all about our ability to engage with each other and to find a way forward in ways that promote prosperity, generate peace, and resolve disputes through dialogue, and ultimately recognize that as we look for ways to address the challenges facing democratic governments around the hemisphere, that our purpose is much greater than just ensuring that citizens have a right to choose their government. It's greater than just ensuring that there's peaceful transition of power. It's greater than just ensuring that there is constitutional order and process. Because ultimately, this all has to have a purpose. And I believe the citizens of our great hemisphere have decided that democracy is the way and democratic government is the means by which you create democratic societies, the means by which you create societies in which equity plays a fundamental role in how societies treat each other, and fundamentally that it is the way in which governments and states provide the resources and the opportunities that allow people not just to have a voice in national destiny, but to have a voice in individual destiny. In other words, to do what our founding fathers would call the pursuit of happiness. And so as we continue with our celebration tonight, I again want to acknowledge the extraordinary work of my co-chair, President Laura Chinchilla. She's been a tremendous partner presiding over a board which is remarkable in its diversity and its breadth and its reach. Very happy for all the board members who are, are with us today. And I also want to acknowledge, as Rebecca did, the presence of Michael Shifter and Peter Hakem uh, as the two past presidents 
of the Inter-American Dialogue. They played a fundamental role in building this organization and this institution, and they're largely responsible for so much of what we have here today. So to Michael and to Peter, I say thank you. And finally, um, recently a member of the dialogue, Roberto Bobby Morimeza of El Salvador passed away. Bobby Morimeza was an extraordinary individual, not only a business leader in El Salvador, but someone who played a fundamental role in achieving peace during a brutal civil conflict in El Salvador, and then building from that peace a country which was able to engage beyond itself, engage in Central America, engage in the region, and especially engage with the United States. And Bobby Murimeza, in many ways, was emblematic of the Inter-American Dialogue, and his role and purpose in the dialogue was greatly appreciated during his life. And as we celebrate this evening, I would like you all to keep him in your thoughts and in your prayers because he was a great man, um, but one among many as members of the dialogue. So again, I want to thank you all for being here today. Uh, it's hugely important at this particular moment as we try to address uh, a political world which is volatile, uh, but which I believe holds the potential for significant change and transformation, which if we can find a way to build on the purpose of the dialogue, will lead to a better world. So thank you all very much. The time has come to transition to the evening's awards. To present our first award, I'd like to introduce a former 2017 Leadership Award recipient for social equity, Luis Alberto Moreno. Moreno is the former president of the Inter-American Development Bank and former Colombian ambassador to the United States. Luis Alberto is also an active member of multiple boards, including the World Economic Forum, Latin America's Conservation Council, and the WWF. Please join me in welcoming Luis Alberto Moreno. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you, Lulu, for that introduction. Uh, Rebecca was talking about how you look in the Zoom. Uh, in my case, I feel very proud that for the first time you all thought I was taller than I am. Uh, <laughs> But uh, really, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here tonight to honor the Dialogues Leadership Award and Innovation and Social Impact to somebody I have learned to admire a lot, who is Piero Paolo Paolo Barbieri. He's originally from Buenos Aires. Pier Paolo is a scholar of economics and history. He studied at some not very well-known universities like Harvard and Cambridge. And he actually published a book exploring the influence of Nazi economics in the Spanish Civil War. And then he made the right thing. He became a great geek and developed a startup that you all have to look at. But prior to that, he had stints at Goldman Sachs and at Soros Fund Management. And Pier Paolo also went on a fund that he created called Green Mantle, which is essentially a global uh, geopolitical consulting firm, and more recently, with tremendous success, created one of the leading fintechs in Latin America called Walla. This fintech provides digital finance services to more than five million people across Latin America, enhancing access to financial inclusion to those that do not have it. He's truly an innovator and a disruptor. He aims to expand coverage fivefold over the next five years. And of course, the consequence of this is huge financial inclusion. He has been recently engaged, and his fiance is here with us, and joining Pier Paolo as well as his parents, who we welcome and want to congratulate. So as you can see, look at everything Pier Paolo has done 
I look at him and I think to myself, I want to be like him when I grow up. <laughs> so finally, please join me in honoring Pier Paolo Bar Barbieri with the 22, 2022 Distinguished Leadership for the America's Award for Social Inclusion and Impact. Pier Paolo. All right. Um, one of the things I learned coming to college to the United States is that shorter and funnier was always the, the right call. So I promise to keep it to two minutes or less. Um, I am greatly honored to be here among all of you, and I am particularly grateful to Rebecca Gaston and the whole team for, for honoring me tonight. Uh, there are so many distinguished people in the audience and in the room that I am absolutely sure that I do not deserve this award. But in thinking about um, tonight, I was thinking that I am, in a way, a product of the dialogue, the dialogue between two regions of the world, one that saw me uh, grow up and the other one that welcomed me for almost 15 years. I grew up in Argentina. I came to the United States and spent 13 years here between some of the institutions that Luis Alberto mentioned and, uh, and a lot of great friends. And then I came back to my country because I believed firmly that there was an amazing opportunity uh, in Latin America to use and harness the power of technology to close some of the divides that have long plagued our region. I believe that financial inclusion is a great value because we frankly cannot ask people to believe in democracy and capitalism, to believe that there is a system that can work for them and then not give them access to an account not give them access to a credit history, not give them access to investments that can protect them from inflation and the cost of living crisis or even insurance. So the opportunity is there and technology is, if nothing else, a great enabler for us to create, to build and to fix some of the great debts of our democracies. And so I've dedicated my life over the last five years and hopefully the next decade or more, as long as the board believes me to be fit, so I can build that dream and expand from Argentina to Colombia and now to Mexico, because I really believe that we have an opportunity, not just in financial services, but as we were discussing at lunch, also in education, healthcare, and so many other regions of the, of the economy to really fix those debts. And so I'm honored to be here tonight and for this small product of the dialogue between two regions to go back home and build. When I was at Harvard, uh, my best class, I, I was a product of a, of a scholarship. Um, I was only able to afford that thanks to Professor Larry Summers' great leadership at the university. And during my best class, the last day of the last class was dedicated to a simple uh, Latin expression, sic transit gloria mundis, which I always try to remind myself anytime anyone gives me any sort of award. And it, translates roughly into how fleeting the glory of the world. The truth is that glory, everybody knows, and, and the Romans knew more than any of us, is very fleeting and it goes by very quickly. But when the night is over and when the award is given, I think that what remains is a person's north. And I was very honored and grateful. My parents are here to grow up in a family with a very clear north. And I believe that this applies to people, it applies to companies, and it applies to countries. And it applies to regions as well. And so I dedicate my life to having a clear north. And for my society, my beloved Argentina, to have a clear north. And in my case, my north is the south. And so this south that we share, that we believe it belongs with the United States, and in a common vision of prosperity that is available to all and a path of progress that, is not society, that does not yield societies that are divided but united in democracy and the possibility of progress and true inclusive capitalism. So I am very grateful to be here tonight. I am very grateful for an award that I'm sure I don't deserve and especially to my parents, my fiance and my best friend who are here. Thank you for being here tonight and putting up with me on stage for just over two minutes. Thank you very much. Felicidades, Pier
Paolo. That was an incredible speech, and I think it's a vision that we can all rally around. At the moment, we are going to pause the program to let you enjoy your dinner. We will resume shortly, so please have good conversation and good food. <laughs>